All right, speaking of that, thank you for the introduction, Eric. It's damn Ohm's Law. Now it all makes sense. All right, it's a very packed week. We're going to go all the way from here all the way to the, to all the way to, let's see, series parallel circuits. By Thursday, on Friday, you have a test on series parallel circuits already. So, what? yeah. Oh, Lord. Yep. So that's what I said, you got, so you can, you can, you can stall out as much as you want. You're having a test, <laughs> all right. So, so before we get into how to do that, let's, ref, let's review everything you forgot in Arrow 309. And that is, what, where, what is electricity? Where does it come from and how does it work? All right, so. It's all about the magic smoke, yes? yes? And if you let the magic smoke out, the the thing quits working. So, by the way, I remembered a great saying, and I believe it was Mark Twain who said, I pity the man who can only spell a word one way. <laughs> all right, so we're talking about atoms, right? Not not the Adam's apple or the, the or, or what? Yeah, or the Adam's family one, yes. Talking about that little tiny thing that we can't see, atoms, the basic building, I hope I wrote that somewhere, the basic building block of all matter. Oh, I did, that's the first thing on here. The atom is considered to be, I can skip that part, the most basic, most basic building block of all matter. Building, and I think that's a Q&A question answer right there. Building block of all all matter. That's what I did. I went through all the Q&As and all of my notes and made sure that I always wrote, I covered everything in the Q&As. All right. They consist. They consist. Consist of, of three subatomic particles. Subatomic, meaning smaller than atomic, smaller than the atom. E T O M I. Particles, particles, which are <clears throat> the protons, the neutrons, and the electrons. All right, so we have those. So let's talk about the nucleus. That is the nougat center. Nucleus, N-U-C-L-E-U-S, is the center, the center of the atom. So if we drew a little diagram of the atom, let's see, we'll just go like this, we'll put one here. We'll say that's the, the the center, the nucleus, if you will. And inside of that, we have protons. And protons have a positive charge. And the reason why they have a positive charge is not because, in my opinion, somebody had a battery and they took a look at a battery and said, well, that's definitely the positive side of the battery. And that's definitely the negative. And then they got all the way down the atom and go, well, would you look at that? That matches. The I think it's the other way around. It's kind of like, it was more of an arbitrary, well, let's just call this positive, and that became the positive side, and then the uh, electron became the negative. I think it's more, it was arbitrary at that point. So we have the, um, what I say, the protons, and then we have the neutrons. Uh, what should we do with neutrons? We can put a little green little N. They're Switzerland, they're neutral. If I was really cool, I'd have drawn a little Switzerland flag there. So they're just neutral. They don't have any sort of charge whatsoever. They're just chilling out over there. And generally speaking, inside the nucleus, everything kind of balances out. If you have two protons, then you'd have two neutrons. So center of the atom, center of, where was it? Center of the atom, the nucleus, the so center of the atom, it contains, contains prot protons and neutrons. The, oops, that's I, I, that'd be one, two, three. Uh, 
proton. Let's see. Protons. Protons are positive. Are positive charged. And therefore, neutrons are oops, are neutral charged. And as I said before, that generally speaking, I don't want to get too much into physics. You balance it out. So if you have two protons, you have two neutrons, and then orbiting around it, we would have two electrons. All right. So electrons, we'll talk about the electrons real quick here. Nucleus, we'll put D electrons. Electrons. Electrons have a negative charge. And they move about the nucleus, around it, orbit it, if you will. The number, so I'll say the number of protons is thus, and thus the number of electrons can be determined by the periodic table of elements, which we are not going to go over. The number of protons and thus the number of electrons and thus the number of electrons electrons can be determined by the periodic table of elements by the periodic table of elements now Who's my super genius in here who can tell me I have two neutrons, two protons, and two electrons. What is this right here, actually? Hydrogen. As we said, it's a gas. It's yeah. like hydrogen. So. so, so yeah, two, two, and two. That's hydrogen. We'll get a little more into that. Not that it matters. Um, let's see. Um, the arrangement. The arrangement. Let me see. The arrangement of electrons. The arrangement of electrons. Electrons. Oops, this would be periodic table of the elements. There you go. PTE. The arrangement of the electrons can also be determined. Can be determined. By the periodic table of elements, PTE. So as far as, is, I don't want to blame it on the FAA, but what the heck, might as well. Your, your textbooks, thus the FAA goes. When we look at atoms, we actually look at them in orbits, very simple orbits. I'll scroll up a little bit so we can back to this very simple orbits and so it would be as an example like these two little electrons right here let's put that as electron that is electron it would they would have you believe that they just kind of orbit similar to the way the moon orbits the earth you know it just kind of goes around and those two guys just go around well that's not the case at all really uh, but we're gonna just pretend like it is but just so that you know before we go on break because I know what time it is um, there are different models so with this and this is not something that would be on the test I would say whose model it's not maybe I don't think I would ask that whose model does this the, the Schrodinger's
the Schrodinger's model model uh, places electrons in a probability cloud model places electrons in a probability a probability cloud meaning meaning they can be found in an area meaning they they can be found in an area which is to say that as we have them orbiting around in this nice little clean little orbit schrodinger's model says no 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 this this atom this uh, atom this uh electron which has all this energy they buzz around and they're actually kind of bouncing around in this weird little area and then there's a probability of where that you're going to find them and then they build the model off this probability of where they're going to be so it gets a lot more complicated but just so you know that's kind of where it is so Bohr Bohr's model model uses a fixed orbit trajectory uses a fixed orbit orbit theory theory we will use we will use this more simplistic theory There we go. All right, that brings us to break time.